It's 819 right now and Mayor Eric Adams is halfway through his first 100 days in office and it's been quite a ride. The Bronx deadly fire, two police officers killed, gun violence and not to mention pandemic recovery. Yeah, Mayor Adams motto get stuff done. Definitely being put to work. So the mayor joining us live this morning to talk about the progress that he has made. So good to see you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for being here. Dan, Jesus, good seeing both of you. You know, miss you guys. Haven't seen you in a few days. I know, I know. <laughs> I'd like to see you in person eventually too, right? And I do want to begin, sir, with the breaking news. The pandemic recovery, CDC expected to loosen federal mask wearing guidelines today, right? And then breaking right here locally, New York City Public Schools dropping mask mandates in outdoor areas of schools. So walk me through the decision there. And is there a specific timeline for indoors, Mr. Mayor? Uh, it's a daily watch for us, and we just really need to commend New Yorkers on how we, we responded to uh, this pandemic. Uh, New Yorkers followed the rules. Uh, we have led the country in vaccinations. Uh, we are moving forward with booster shots. Uh, people did what was right with social distancing, and now we're able to cycle out of this terrible a moment that we've all experienced. And so today the chancellor announced uh, that we are lifting uh, the mask mandate for children when they play outside. Mm -hmm. And eventually we're going to move to the place to ease up on many of these mandates so we can get back to a level of normality that we right. all are looking for. How soon could that indoor uh, mandate be lifted for kids in school? I think it's around the corner. Uh, it's clear that the numbers that my uh, health care professionals are giving me each morning, uh, you know, when I have on, the, on my mask, you can't see my smile, but trust me, I'm smiling. Uh -huh. uh, the numbers are moving in the right direction, and we're going to follow the science because, remember, we can't allow our city to close down again right. out of our anticipation. Right, so th th that was the conversation around schools, which is a different conversation than citywide, right? Because you had mentioned loosening vaccine and mask mandates in the next few weeks. Are you any closer to a timeline on that? You know us here. We look for the very specific details here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know what? And, and that is your job to look for the specific details. It is my job to manage your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to let the healthcare professionals uh, to do their job because I don't want to see you in three days. And you said, Eric, you said this day you're going to do X. <laughs> I know. I know. And, and, and there's been a lot of news, sir, around this happening in time for Kyrie Irving to begin playing for the Nets, right, as they enter the playoff season here. So any decision making around that, I know there's been a lot of pressure and a lot of headlines about that. And, and this, it, it is uh, something that people are asking about. Listen, you bring a championship game here, you bring in uh, millions of dollars in revenue, uh, but we cannot uh, base our decisions um, on sports. The real game we're fighting is the game of safety and health, and we're going to make the right decision for New Yorkers. I want that championship ring, uh, but not at the <laughs> expense of making sure we shut down our city again. And if it falls in line, it falls in line. If it's not, we got to make the right decision for New Yorkers. All right, Mr. Mayor, let's switch gears a little bit. Our other big story this morning is that situation <clears throat> unfolding in Ukraine. It's really very heartbreaking for a lot of folks that live here in New York who have family over there. There's been fears of cyber attacks here in the U.S. So any threats here in the city that you've been briefed on? Well, we have to be uh, cautious. And it is really unfortunate that Russia took this action. It is a stain on humanity. And I am asking New Yorkers to keep in mind uh, that the Russian people and Russian speaking people who live in this city, mm -hmm. uh, they are not part of that action. And so there's a duality here. Let's march and stand firm with our Ukrainian residents, but that's also uh, not in any way uh, send out a negative message to the right. Russian speaking people who enjoy this city. We are going to fortify our cyber security. Uh, we put in place a joint initiative with the governor uh, and New York City, and we're going to make sure we protect and harden uh, our soft targets uh, in this city, and we're going to do it the right way. Understood, sir. You know, speaking of safety, let's talk about what's happening underground as well. The city's subway safety plan launched this week. We re reported this morning a new survey which showed 29 homeless encampments were found inside tunnels and 89 stations. Around 350 people were found in the system earlier in the month. Since your outreach teams deployed just a few days ago, do you know the numbers offhand? And, and where are those folks who are being removed from the subways? Where are they going? Well, let's, let's do a combination. Let's peel back each layer of your question. Uh, number one, we're dismantling and will be dismantling every uh, 
encampment in our system. Not acceptable. Previous administrations may have looked at this and walked past them. We're not doing that. I'm sending the right message that our subway system must be safe and, and reliable for our riders. Uh, number two, we've made over 125 daily interactions with those who we uh, consider to be uh, dealing with mental health illnesses or need to find some form of housing due to, due to being homeless. And many have taken us up on our offers, but we have been correcting mm -hmm. the conditions and setting the right tone of what we expect in the subway station. And I got to take my hat off to the partnership of the governor, uh, my homeless service outreach, and the New York City Police Department and mental health professionals. Mm -hmm. We're going to get this right. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we have to ask you about this. The LGBTQ advocates, switching gears a little bit, they were outside City Hall yesterday uh, protesting against three of your recent appointments, uh, Fernando B Cabrera, Eric Salgado, and Guilford Monroe's. And there seems to be real concern here uh, with members of the LGBTQ community saying they really felt ignored by your choices here. So what is your message to those who are raising these concerns? And any chance you'll have a, uh, a meeting to go face to face and talk things out with them? Oh, yes, and these are my uh, allies. Uh, these are the uh, men and women, uh, members of the transgender community who uh, I fought with when we passed marriage. And remember what America and New York was like back then. Uh, when I took that vote for marriage, uh, I was banned from houses of worship. Even my brother-in-law, who was a minister, told me I was not allowed to come back in his church after taking that vote. So people were in a certain place at that time, mm -hmm. and they evolved. My brother-in-law later came and apologized to me. Other members of the clergy did as well. There was an evolution, and I believe that the three individuals that are raising concern, they too evolved. This is who we are as right. a city in a country, and I look forward to sitting down with the members of the LGBTQ plus community next week, and they know I'm a fighter for them, and I believe the diversity of this uh, this community understand that they reached out to me and said, Eric, you, we know you've always been with us. You are one of yeah. the leading voices for these issues. We're up against the clock here, but real quick, you know, so you're meeting with them, with them next week, sir. And I think that a lot of them, including Crystal Hudson, was wondering why you didn't meet with them prior to have the conversation, because we know you're big on, on communication and conversations. Well, actually, I did. I spoke with several members of the community. I think sometimes uh, when you hear from the numerical uh, numbers that are saying we don't like what you've done, mm -hmm. we miss those who said, we know you, Eric. We know you've always been one of the leading voices on this issue. Uh, we have almost 700,000 uh, members of the LGBTQ plus community in the city, so you're not able to make 700,000 calls. We know that. But I spoke to many of the leaders that have uh, stood with me and I stood with them throughout the years of over 30 years of fighting on behalf of those who are part of the community. And they know me and I know them and we're going to work through this together. All right, Mayor Adams, we really appreciate your time this morning and talking to us to all these wide range of topics. Thank you. If we had more time, I was going to get into a smoothie <laughs> recipe with you, but I'm being told that we have to go with you. So next time, all right? Thank you, sir.